Hey everyone, Obsidian October has ended, but we have one last video for you in our plugin critique series. So far, we've taken a look at two really great plugins and we've done a deep dive into their code. This time around, we're gonna be switching things up. In my hunt to find the next plugin to review, I noticed a couple of things. One, I noticed that some plugins were so well written that there was gonna be nothing to critique. And two, I noticed that a lot of plugins were making the same small mistakes with the plugin API. Today, instead of looking at any individual plugin, we're gonna be taking a deep dive into the plugin API itself, and we're gonna be talking about some common mistakes and some of the internals underneath. We're also gonna be discussing some changes that Obsidian has made in recent updates under the hood that might impact your plugin. First up, the Vault's Process API. This function came up in several plugin submissions, and it's clear that the API could use a little bit of further explanation for how to use it properly. Multiple times I've seen code that looks like this. To understand why this is wrong though, we first need to understand the problem that it's solving. You see, all file system interactions in Obsidian go through the file system adapter. The file system adapter is a thin interface that manages all communication with the device's file system. This means all disk reads and writes. The file system adapter processes all operations in a queue. So only one read or write will be happening at any given time. So let's say that we have a plugin that intends on modifying a file in our vault. The code will call vault.read to read the file into a string and we call vault.modify to save our new string to disk. And that works pretty well until we install a new plugin and that plugin also wants to modify this file. Watch what happens when both plugins try to modify the same file at the same time. Both plugins were able to successfully read the file contents. Plugin A makes its changes to the file followed by plugin B. You'll notice that plugin A's changes are totally lost. The two plugins are racing to make changes to the same file. The solution is in the order of operations. If we change the order so that plugin A writes its changes before plugin B is able to read the file contents, see what happens. This is called an atomic transaction. By keeping the read and write operations paired together in the operations queue, we maintain data integrity. This type of transaction is exactly what the process API is for. It takes the vault read and vault modify functions and makes sure that they happen in the same atomic transaction in the queue. So if we look at some code, here we are reading a file, making changes based off the file contents, and then writing those changes back to disk. If we want to change this so that it's using the process API, let's take a look. The process API takes a callback function. That callback function is passed in the contents on disk, so it's doing the read for us. And what we want to return from that callback function is our modified string, so what will be saved to the disk. If we look at our code here, we're reading, so this is already done for us, then we're making our changes, and then we're modifying our file on disk. All we need to do in our process function is take this change, and we'll just paste it directly in. And then we need to make sure, and this is very important, we need to make sure to return that value from the process function. This code is now doing exactly the same thing as this, except for it's doing it all atomically, so it makes sure that it doesn't get affected by other plugins trying to alter the same file on disk at the same time. Let's talk about one of the most misunderstood functions in the Obsidian plugin API. That is the plugin on unload function. I can't tell you how many plugins I see struggle to use this function correctly and not understand what code belongs in here and what code does not. So let's clear some things up. First, this function is not called when you close Obsidian. Instead, 
the function is only called in two situations. One, it's called when you disable the plugin. This could be when you manually toggle disable or when the plugin is completely uninstalled. And two, it's called when you update the plugin. This might be a little bit counterintuitive and maybe surprising, but think about it for a second. When you update your plugin, the old version of the plugin code needs to be properly unloaded and then the new code gets executed and then loaded into memory. So what belongs in on unload? This is a time to be thinking of cleanup. This is to make sure that your global event listeners are cleaned up. This is a time to make sure that everything is properly released from memory and you don't have any memory leaks when your plugin gets disabled. But remember, this is not a place to perform any actions. You should not be saving anything to disk. And this might be a bit surprising. This is not when you should be detaching your custom view. Let me explain. So your plugin might have some code that looks like this, where I have a custom view type that's just defined as my view. And in our on unload function, we're calling detach leaves of type. This means that when the plugin gets disabled or uninstalled, we clean up after ourselves. We remove all of our custom leaves. But like I mentioned before, this is also called when your plugin gets updated. So let's talk through what happens when you update the plugin. When you update the plugin, you're detaching all of your custom leaves. So you might have some corresponding code in your onload function. When the workspace is ready, we check to see if there are any instances of our custom view already loaded in the workspace. And if there aren't any, then we create a new one in our default position. So in this case, it just creates it in our right sidebar. The problem is if I update and I remove all of my custom leaves, then I always am going to have my leaf start in its default position. This means that any custom view state or just any custom layout position that I might have is going to get lost when I update your plugin. So what should you do instead? The good news is, as of Obsidian 1.7, you no longer need to think about this. Obsidian is now smart enough that when you disable or uninstall a plugin, all of that plugin's custom views will get unloaded from the workspace. This means you no longer need to disambiguate between whether your plugin is getting disabled or if it's getting updated. Now, your plugin on unload can just remove any code that's detaching the leaves and let Obsidian handle the rest. And that concludes our plugin critique series. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys learned something. And a huge thank you to the plugin community at large. You guys are what make Obsidian great. You continue to push the boundaries of what's possible in a note-taking application. I'm excited to see what you build next. All right, I gotta get back to working on Obsidian because it is November.